Hmm. <clears throat> oh, sorry there. You caught me mid-training for me beating the hell out of my haters. But you know what people can't possibly hate? That's right, mentalism. So today I'm gonna show you guys a trick that you could carry around in your wallet. All you need is a wallet and uh, a pen and some business cards. And you're gonna be good to go for this feat of drawing duplication mentalism magicry. Oh yeah, all we need is a nice classic Taco Bell bath mat and a camera set up in what has to be the worst angle ever imaginable. It's okay though, let me add some production value here and we're gonna be good to go. So for this, you're gonna have a participant. In this case, we're gonna take a card out here and we're gonna have them draw something on the face of this card. Now this is just a blank standard business card and we're gonna have them draw something uh, quick that they could easily do. So in this case, uh, you tell them that people typically draw something like a stick man or a sun, but uh, try to draw something that uh, is unique and uh, would be different and uh, maybe that you could easily do in about five to 10 seconds. And of course you give them a little bit of a marker and uh, they go off and they're gonna draw something. Now, because I don't have any participants here, I'm gonna go ahead and draw uh, maybe what is a uh, something that everybody would recognize, right? Which is a house. Now this might look like a house from uh, the Lower East Side of Detroit, but it's a house nevertheless. And a participant comes back and uh, well, you take the card and you show it to somebody else and have them look at it to remember the actual drawing to make sure that uh, everybody has seen this. And at this point, here's what it looks like to the participant. You're gonna go in, you're gonna go and reach inside of your wallet, you're gonna take out a card and you're going to try your best to draw what they drew. So you're gonna try to get your impressions as to what they drew. And in this case, uh, for uh, the sake of explanation right here, I'm drawing something aggressively. And of course I place it down and I go, you know what? No, 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 no. Um, I think this is actually failed completely. I feel like this is actually failed completely. Oh boy, um, I guess uh, for the first time, what did you draw? What did you draw, sir? And the participant says, oh, I drew a house. And you go, oh, well, let's take a look. You drew a, you did draw a house. You did draw a house, which is interesting because I thought this was a complete failure, but I drew a house as well. I drew a house as well. Oh yeah. So this is obviously the best case scenario for this particular mentalism bit. However, this happens more often than not. When asked to draw something quickly between five and 10 seconds, most people are gonna draw either a tree, a house, a stick man, a sun. And guess what? You negate all of those by mentioning a stick man and a sun. Now, typically people might also draw something like a boat, but uh, here the most common thing is a house because it's very easy to draw. It's something that everybody's drawn at some point, uh, that or a tree, and uh, you could just easily take advantage of that and have most of the time a miracle at hand because you saw how clean it looks. That's generally how clean the actual routine looks like apart from some switching that you're gonna have to do, but that's necessary. Don't complain. So this is what you need for this particular trick. You're gonna need a wallet. Uh, this is a billfold style wallet. As a matter of fact, this is specifically the Anthony Miller triple threat wallet. So that's what this one is. It has a nice little slit here where you would uh, slide a playing card surreptitiously, but uh, that's what uh, you would need. Just any wallet would work perfectly for this. Now this one does have an advantage in that it does have a place that I could actually hold this card at. So it actually has a nice little spot here where I could hold the card, which I'm gonna need because I'm going to be switching in a moment and I'm gonna be taking advantage of a wonderful under the wallet switch that I first saw done in uh, one of the Art of Astonishment books by Paul Harris. And this wallet works excellently for that because you could just slide this in there. Now I know what you're saying. Oh, I don't have a wallet. That, that, I don't have a wallet like that. Well, guess what? You could easily make one. Right, you could easily make one because all you need in this case would be a rubber band outside of a, a slim style wallet where you could just reach in and pull the card out and you're gonna be good to go. So if you have a hair tie, you could wrap it around and still reach in and grab the business cards you need without having to actually unfold the wallet. And uh, that way, this card is being held here and you don't have to hold it with your fingers. So here I have a hair tie. Look, it disappears. It disappears when I hold it over the wallet. But look, it's back now. It's back now. Look for that on Magic Stream on illusionist.com. Use code PickCake to get 10% off.
But here in this case, you could easily wrap a hair tie or rubber band around the wallet. And I'm gonna be doing it on the side without, in this case, without the actual gimmick. And uh, here you could just easily place that card underneath and you don't have to worry about holding it. Now, if you don't wanna get a rubber band and you don't want to actually uh, bother with that or a hair tie, then you're gonna have to hold the card underneath the wallet in order to do the actual switch, which could be a little bit uh, difficult because the card could slip and slide. But with this case, it's self-contained and you're gonna be able to get into this without necessarily having to worry about anything. So I do recommend using the uh, rubber band or if you have a card to wallet like this, using the actual card to wallet mechanism in order to hold the actual card itself uh, in preparation for the switch. So this is what you need. You need a business card that you draw in this case, a house. You could draw either a boat, a house, something like that, whatever it is that you want that you think is gonna be commonly drawn. In this case, I think the house is gonna be the most commonly drawn, but you're gonna see it's not gonna matter anyways. That goes face up right here in this case underneath the wallet and I'm ready to go. So I'm ready to go with that. I also need some blank business cards inside of the wallet. These are just some standard uh, blank business cards. You could find this in any stationary store, typically in uh, Staples, you have Office Depot, Walmart, uh, Amazon.com has them. You could buy a pack of uh, easy ones that you could just tear off and rip and you have billets that you can use anytime, anywhere. And uh, it's always great to have these in your wallet because you could really do an entire show with just this in your wallet, uh, which sounds terrible. I do apologize for my virginity when I uh, say something like that, but uh, it's something that you could consider. So that goes inside of your wallet. You have a pen and guess what my friends, you are ready to go to duplicate drawings. That's all you need. So here is how you would present that. You would go and reach into your wallet like this. Now, the reason I reach into my wallet like this is because that's how I'm gonna mimic taking out a card from my wallet later. So I wanna replicate that here in the beginning and I'm gonna take out a card and have a participant draw something on it. Now you can make a mention as to how parapsychologists did similar tests to this in the 60s and 70s to test for psychic activity. And you could get into some spiel on how psychics like Uri Geller in the 70s did this under test conditions and they would have them draw something, a quick image that they could sketch in five to 10 seconds. And they would see if they could actually replicate that image. So in this case, that's exactly what I want you to do. Now, people typically go for something like the sun or they draw a stick figure. Those are way too obvious. So just go for something quick that you could do in five to 10 seconds, draw it uh, in a corner over there by the other magicians, and then let me know when you're ready. And here you could go into some spiel about uh, parapsychology or whatnot. Now, there are a couple scenarios that could happen in this particular case. The best scenario is that they draw a house. Now, here's the thing. You're not gonna know that yet. So keep in mind the participant is holding on to a pen they're holding on to the business card and you're holding on to the wallet that you just removed the card from. So at this point, you're going to take the card back from the participant and you're gonna show it to other participants. You're gonna say, yeah, please look at this, please remember it because uh, in case this person forgets, I want you to remember. As a matter of fact, could you please cap the marker? So I'm gonna take this underneath the wallet and I'm just gonna come out with the other card. So do keep in mind that this card is being held by uh, this particular position. So underneath the wallet, this is all that's taking place. I'm just switching hands. So it's not really anything crazy sleight of hand. All I'm doing is taking this card underneath and then pulling out the other one. That's it. Now this card goes underneath the wallet. First time I saw the switch done was in Art of Astonishment. I believe it was uh, a variation of that in a trick where he switches out a dollar bill where he switches out a dollar bill. He does it a little bit like this, but uh, that's a little bit too magic-y. So this is just a, a simple transference of the card from this hand to this hand. So the way you wanna think about it is not that you're moving the, the card from this hand to this hand, but that you're moving the wallet from this hand to this hand. That's how you wanna think about it. So that way it just becomes in transference of the wallet from hand to hand. And at this point, this goes on a table, which is your previously drawn house that goes right there and their card with their drawing is now underneath the wallet. So this is why you want somewhat of a sizable wallet for this because uh, you do have a little bit of play here in case the business card does move around. You have some play so that uh, they're not gonna be able to see it from above. Now in this case, what I would usually do in this uh, particular scenario, I wouldn't open the wallet. I would just reach in with my thumb like this and apparently take out a card. But really all I'm doing is just reaching in with my dirty little fingers underneath and pulling out the exact same card. So I do this as I tell the participant uh, to hand me the pen and uh, or to cap the pen and that uh, I'm gonna draw my impressions on a card myself. So that's how it goes and I could just table the actual wallet as I apparently reach in with my thumb and pull out a card. Now this is why having a rubber band, for example, around a normal wallet would be advantageous because you never actually have to open a wallet. So you could just reach in there just like this and pull out 
uh, supposedly the card from inside the wallet that you're gonna draw your impressions on. So you take the pen from the spectator and here, look at what I'm looking at. Right now, I'm looking at the participants drawing. So I'm looking at what they drew. Now, in this case, I'm gonna be pretending to get impressions from the participants. One of the things that I talk about on the Pick Cake Magic Academy, I talk about the idea of the effect not being the method. So typically when it comes to mentalism, we see those to be the same thing. But that's not the, the effect, my friends. The effect is how you get that information from the participant. So check out the Pick Cake Magic Academy, by the way, link in the description section below. Access to over a thousand videos. Join the Mentalism Academy. It's only $10 a month. What? That's two white cloths. Uh, so what you're doing here is you're trying to pretend to get information from the participant, however it is you want to get it, and you're taking the opportunity to peek at their drawing. Now, if you see that they drew a house, you are done. You are done because you are gonna pretend to draw a house and then place that on top of the card that's already on the table. And you're done, that's it. You're done. You're done, you're done. And now do keep in mind that these cards are displaced because technically you placed what should be uh, your card on top, but really this is actually their original drawing. So when you pick it up and you address the spectators, I'm just simply gonna thumb that off to the other hand and I say, in what you drew, uh, you drew a house, uh, which is uh, interesting because uh, I also drew a house. So that's just that, you're not really making it a move, you're not doing some weird Monty switch, you just take it in the other hand. As you address it, you address this as the participant's card and you say, oh, you did draw a house, that's interesting. And uh, you can make mention as to what got you to draw a house as well. And you end with this picture perfect image of both drawings exactly duplicated. So that's a wonderful way to be. Now. What if they don't draw a house? Are you stuck? Are you done? Are you, it's over? No, no, you have a, a perfect alternative that could work out. So remember in this case, the participant hasn't drawn a house. Let's say for the sake of completion, they've drawn, um, leave what you think I'm about to draw on this particular card in the comment section below. Let's see. If you guessed be a penis, you're disgusting. I'm gonna draw a tree. I'm gonna draw a tree. So you need to get your mind out of the gutter. So let's say the participants drew a tree. So at this point, when you actually peek at the card, you notice that they drew a tree. And you go, I'm getting a, I'm having a hard time here getting the information from you. Could you keep your chin up? Yeah, look at me. Yeah, this is what I'm getting, but I don't feel necessarily comfortable about this. And all I'm doing is miming drawing a house. Because remember, that's what I drew. So I'm gonna be incorrect in my first guess here. And uh, I'm gonna go and ask him, uh, is this something, by the way, that is man-made? And the participant's gonna say, no, it isn't something that's man-made. So I go, ah, that's what I thought. Uh, let's try this again. And now at this point, all I'm gonna do is reach into my wallet and grab another blank card. And remember, you've peeked at what they drew. So you've peeked at what they drew. So at this point, you know exactly what they drew. And supposedly, you drew a house down. So you're just asking them, is this something man-made or is this organic? And you go, ah, that's what I thought. Uh, let me redo this, I'm sorry. Uh, this usually doesn't happen, but I was stuck between these two things. And at this point, all you're gonna do is just simply duplicate exactly what they drew that you peeked at which is in this case, a tree. And you go, I definitely feel better about this. I'm sorry about that. Initially, what I had thought you drew is a house. So I thought you drew a house, which is why I uh, drew a house. And all I'm doing there is just simply picking up the packet and then taking the bottom card. That's it. I'm not making a move of it. I'm not making this into some weird magic display. I'm not turning this into a Jason Ledane bottom deal. All right, I'm turning this into just a, just a thing. I'm picking up the cards and I'm taking the bottom card to myself as a non-issue. And I say, I drew a house. I thought you were gonna draw a house. I got the impression that uh, this was something that was uh, man-made and uh, I really got the idea of a home. But uh, I think that uh, maybe I was close. Uh, what is it that you actually drew? And at this point, the participant is gonna say, oh, I drew a, a tree. And now you could just separate the cards just as before and you could show them exactly what it is that they drew and then show that it matches exactly what you drew. So you have a still a wonderful way to get to this beautiful picturesque image of you holding both cards that match 100%, which is the point of this drawing dupe. And what makes it so strong is this image right here where it's exactly replicated on the other card. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. And again, super simple to do. It's just a matter of getting to that point where you go, oh, I'm sorry, I messed up. So whatever it is they drew, find something that doesn't match. So whatever it is they drew, in this case, if they drew a tree, you just ask them, oh, is there is it is what you drew man-made? 
And obviously, no, because it's a tree, unless it's some sort of weird government tree where they have cameras to spy on you. But that's another video in and of itself. And uh, you just go, ah, all right, I thought so. Uh, I thought you drew something else, but uh, give me another shot here. You reach in, grab another one, and you still have this perfect image. And this just goes away. That just goes away. But uh, what's gonna happen most of the time is you're gonna see that they're gonna draw a house or they're gonna draw something and generally use your perception. I know it sounds weird and new age, but generally try to uh, think as to what the participant is going to draw. Now in your wallet, you could have uh, pre-drawn uh, houses, you could have pre-drawn boats, you could have pre-drawn uh, trees if you want, so you don't necessarily have to uh, keep drawing them yourselves and only uh, waste a, a minimum amount of business cards if you're being cheap and skimpy. And uh, whatever impression you get from the participant, that is what you could put in place underneath the wallet ready to be switched. One thing that I do recommend is if you do that route, make sure to place it in a different compartment. So in this case, if I have uh, the other compartments here that uh, isn't gonna be used, that I have my drawings in, and I wrap the rubber band around the wallet, in this case, like this, place the card underneath, in this case, I'd be placing the card here, I have it in a separate place from the other blank business card. So that way I'm not reaching into that pile and accidentally pull out a picture of a boat and I'm supposed to be uh, picking out a blank business card. So that's just a little tidbit, make sure that they're in separate compartments. But I think you have a wonderful drawing duplication that's super simple to do. And all it takes is just a simple switch under the wallet and that's it. That's it, my friends. Mentalism doesn't have to be hard as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, let's go back and cut up to my, uh, my face so I can end the video. I'm willing to bet that most of you guys have tuned out already. Most of you guys are gone and that's okay. That's fine. The only people that are here are the loyal followers, the people that actually care about the end portion of the video and care about the entirety of what I have to say. But I think that was a fun video, right? A little mentalism bits, a little teaser for the Pig Cake Magic Academy that you could check out in the description section below. Rave reviews all around. Rave reviews, my friend. I get nothing but good reviews. And the ones that are bad are just like little things that I could address. So consider, consider joining the uh, Academy and uh, getting access to over a thousand videos. I put up videos every single week, all right? Four to five videos. Five videos if you're part of the Mentalism Academy. So it's a bargain. Some people only post one video a month on their magic subscription things, right? So join the OG. Join the Pick Cake Magic Academy. I realize that the end of this video essentially is an ad. So if you did skip, I understand it. But um, if you didn't skip, I appreciate it. But that's the drawing dupe. It's a very easy version. It's something that's super simple to do. It doesn't require a lot of effort. I know there's all these uh, weird techie versions of doing this. This is just simple. It just requires a wallet. Look at that. Look at that boy. And you have what is essentially a uh, miracle that you could do just in your wallet anytime, anywhere. So I think that's a wonderful thing to have. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to clean my hat. Look at the monitor. Hopefully it's been in focus this entire time. I guess the good thing about this channel is that uh, the aesthetic is not necessarily the point of it, right? So, you know, like Peter McKinnon, the aesthetic is kind of the vibe and also he's very personable, but uh, you, re you require his videos to be like 4K and perfectly immaculately focused. Here, what's the focus? I'm like a, a short virgin magician. The aesthetic is not really the focus. It's this right here, the dialogue. So I could get away with having an out of focus video.